Hey guys, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dhere Bagga and today I'll be playing the five nut blitz on Lee Chess with zero increment. And during the game, I'll try to be as instructive as possible. Like always, making sure that we understand the flow of the game, the lines that we are trying to achieve and what opponent is trying to do post the game. We'll also have a quick computer analysis to understand what could have been done better during the game and to probably take something away from the game as a learning that improves our game further. Before we start off with the game, I would request you to subscribe to my channel and press on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I'm posting up daily. So yeah, let's start off with the game and see how it goes. Got the black pieces here. I'll play the Karokan defense, c6, d5. It's a very solid opening from black uh, and you just try to make sure pieces get very active squares here. We can simply take on here. He takes with the pawn. Now we can play. Oh, so I want to develop my bishop first, but that's not going to happen right away. I can play the knight to f6. Or I could have gone with a pawn to e5 as well. Uh, yep, that's what we can do here. Pawn to e5, stopping the pawn from moving forward. Now it's a bit weakened up, so we have to defend it. So bishop on d6. Now we can get up a knight on uh, g4 here. That pins the knight as well. Tries to remove the pin. We'll just get backwards. If he pushes the pawn forward, that weakens up his king side. So ideally he should not. We are threatening to take on the knight or maybe just keep our bishop plays here until the queen is removed from here. All right, now probably we can develop some other piece. That can be the knight, the last minor piece remaining to be developed. We can castle any point of time. We'll just play a6 here. not letting him advance further we just prevented that before only probably now knight can hop in on c5 knight on c5 or uh i think bishop on the diagonal also is helpful and if he plays the pawn now uh, on b4, we'll bring back the bishop on a7, always eyeing the king. Okay, he's preparing for uh, the pawn move next, which we are okay with. So I think simply rook on d8, rook in front of the queen, always a good option. You can never go wrong with this. I had a video on this as well. I just placed the link in the description below and on top of it as well. Things are pretty guarded. We are pretty safe. Nothing to be bothered about. We're pre preparing to castle in the next move mostly unless he offers something or makes a mistake. Let's see what he does here. It's important to let opponent play and then react accordingly rather than just going ahead with the offload. Bishop can come back, of course. Uh, still, the pin is there on the queen uh, with the bishop, so not really willing to remove that pin. I think castling makes more sense, so we'll castle. He gets on the knight, trying to kick the bishop away from here. Now, either we can take or just bring back the bishop. I like to keep my pieces on the board, so just bringing the bishop back. Let's see what he does here. Probably we have to move the bishop some point of time. Oh, he can also get his bishop active on e3. In that case, we will have to take it probably. Or we can just wait and let him take so that we take back with the knight and then probably hop in on a very good square with the knight. D3 for knight would be very nice. It will be guarded with the rook as well. So, yeah. All right. He's trying to take on the bishop, which is okay. 
he takes i can just take back so nothing to be bothered about there how about let's bring back the bishop that also makes space for the knight we are good on time 30 seconds odd ahead of the opponent so fair enough we might need some time in the latter half of the game so just trying to save some time as well all right so he gets his queen on f3 now problem with the knight here now then uh, is that i cannot move my knight away from there or I could still find out a way to defend it. I think I can. I can just, uh, let's bring back the queen on b8 first. That defends the bishop always. Now we can go ahead with the knight on c5. So the threat was if bishop comes on to uh, e3 and my knight is there on c5, then I have to move my knight. I can't move my knight actually because the bishop is hanging. and. The whole idea of placing the knight on c5 is to find a good square for the knight, which is d3. So the purpose will not be accomplished. So that's why we are just trying to hold on. Okay, he's probably looking forward to give a check, maybe. Looks like. Can I take on the knight? Yeah, let's take. He takes back with the knight. Now I'm okay with the check. I can just move my king aside. Uh, if he brings the queen in between, we can play the pawn forward. So nothing is bothering much. Knight is going to come here and probably in some point of time, we'll have an exchange with a light square bishop. We can play the move um, b5 as well if he does n percent. We can take back with the bishop. But then probably a6 weakens up with his rook as well as bishop eyeing it. So not really a good idea. Okay, he's losing out on time. 50 odd seconds now, the diff time difference. We are similar rated on leeches in blitz. Let's see his rating across all profiles. Okay, I think he's more of a blitz player. Yep. 46 seconds on the clock. I think we're good. And the position to be open up from here will take some time. So we should be comfortable winning this. That's the advantage of the Karukan. You are keeping things close, not letting the opponent attack, which is always nice. If he moves the queen or the rook from here, uh, the pawn on e4 also weakens up. Both the knights are attacking it. Oh, he's trying to pin the knight now. Can I move the knight away from here? I certainly can. Knight back. Loses the rook. If he takes, that opens up the center for the king. Let's defend with the other knight. Both the knights are connected. Okay, now he's planning to take with the, with the bishop. And then if I take back, that's mate. Okay, I can just play the pawn forward, I believe. Or there's some threat. Can I attack his queen? Defense. And now probably knight on f6. 
All right, just move the pawn forward. He's trying to come here and then trying to mate, but the knight is pretty solid there, so not nothing to be worried. And we can play... Oh, how about taking on the pawn? Let's waste his time. That's a check. Ah, that's over. So let's analyze the game ones. Pretty solid at the end. We just tried to play on time. So sacking away the pieces there. Let's analyze the game quickly. So it started off with e4. I respond with c6. The Karo can't defense. He plays d3. Responds with d5. He plays the knight uh, on d2. I capture the pawn. He takes back. And now knight goes to f6. He brings the bishop on c4. So pawn e5. He plays knight now to f3. I develop the light, the dark square bishop on d6, defending the pawn. He castles. I pin the knight over there with the bishop. He tries to kick away the bishop. I bring back on the h5. He gets the rook uh, on e1, centralizing the rook. All this important. I try to develop my knight on d7. He plays a4. I respond with a6. He plays a5. Now that's passive when you're just trying to move your pawns multiple times. I just move a queen to c7. He goes back with the knight on f1. And now bishop to c5, attacking the diagonal of uh, towards the king. Now he is preparing uh, for the move pawn to b4. So he had to first play pawn to c3. I play rook d8, centralizing my rook, placing it in front of the queen. He removes the queen from the d-file, places it on e2. So now I castle. He brings the knight, attacking the bishop. I bring back the bishop on g6. He tries to attack the bishop again. I bring back the dark square bishop on e7. He brings the queen on f3. I get my queen back on b8. Uh, here he tries to come up with the other knight on f5. I take on the knight. He takes back. So, yeah, pieces are aligned. Uh, and there is some serious threat here, which I think he missed. Or what, what, what was happening here? What's the real threat that I'm not able to see? Okay. So, if let's play the computer line, knight to uh, e8 here. Then bishop comes in. I have to save the rook. If I save the rook, oh, the check is coming with the knight. So my rook is hanging there. That's the threat. Okay. Here he brings the bishop, uh, pinning the knight. I bring back the other knight, defending it. Oh, he finds the right square again. Uh, knight to, uh, sorry, queen to g3. I try to exchange the queen, uh, attack the queen with the knight. He brings it forward. Oh, that was a bad move. I should have just played a pawn to g6 here. That defense more stuff there. And then probably the attack will not be worth from there on. Nothing much apart from this. He can take on the rook. I can take back. And he was losing out on time. Yes, he can win another exchange there. But the game was pretty much over that point of time. Now that's a very nice stack on the f2 with the queen as well as the bishop. The knight can also come into the picture anytime soon. So yeah, that that can go wrong. Yes, computer is saying 6.5 in favor of white here. And that's probably because uh, he can defend the position right now. But uh, things can probably change quickly. Uh, you don't find sometimes the right moves. Computer does. So that can be tricky. I hope there was something to be learned from the game. Uh, Karo Khan is solid as always. A uh, couple of things that could have went wrong, but probably uh, was never in danger. And we didn't give a thought at the end because uh, we, uh, the opponent was losing completely on time. I hope you like the video. Please do like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, do comment and share your feedback. And I would see you again next time. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.